Hello friends, this is Zuts now with natural lightning and comfort blanket included and in today's video we're gonna go over every breakable wall in the game and tell you how to play around them. I hope I haven't forgotten any of them. Uh, of course maps are being reworked and it's completely possible that more breakable walls will be added or removed as we go forward but this is a list of the maps that currently have breakable walls. We're gonna go over all of them. The ones that don't have any obviously we're just gonna skip. Um, some things about breakable walls, typically speaking, uh, breaking them uh, is a decent idea for, for, for the most part. Uh, if you're at the end of the game and you can just break them to get points, that's great. If you're a killer that can break breakable walls, typically it's a decent idea to help you and get some points. But there are some breakable walls that you don't have to break um, because there's no advantage to it and your time is, an, an, is a precious resource that you don't want to waste. And some breakable walls that you definitely do not want to break ever, as they actually make the job for the survivors much easier as a killer. And if you're a survivor and the killer breaks you, you definitely want to take advantage of it. So we'll be going over all of them and telling you how to deal with all of them. Uh, of course, use your best judgment. If you're a nurse or a hag, then you're going to play around certain structures differently. You might want to restrict the, the movement of the survivor, so it's easier for you to use your power because you don't need to chase typically. Uh, in the same way that the average killer can, but at least if you're, say, a doctor or a shape, a Myers, then you don't have those powers and you will need to make the chasing as efficient as possible. So this guy should help you out. We're going to go over every single map. And uh, thank you very much to Nina, who's been helping me record all of this. You want to say hi to the video, Nina? Hey, guys. She's going to be our killer and she's going to help us demonstrate. Let's jump into it. For Azarov's resting place, there is a single breakable wall in the main building or office. There is a door that's far away from the window, and the closer door to the window has the breakable wall. You can play this a bit like Shaq, where you go through this window, and the killer will have a relatively hard time catching you if they just try to play around the window. You can, depending on the killer, you can just keep running around here, and they should have a Relatively difficult time catching you. So you definitely want to break this door if the survivors are playing well into it. Once you break it, go ahead. Then this window becomes much less powerful as the killer can just navigate around it. As for the wretched shop, it is pretty much the same. There's only one breakable wall which can be found right here in the main building. Now, you may or may not want to break this wall depending on the window spawns. A window can spawn here or here. And whichever window spawns will result in the other one being blocked. If this one right here is blocked, you definitely want to keep this uh, wall completely sealed. Never touch it as a killer because that means that survivors will have a complete cul-de-sac. They will not be able to leave. This will be a death trap for them. Uh, things like basement become really powerful if you keep this closed and there's no window here. If there's a survivor working on a generator right here, which typically always spawns, you can just pressure them from this angle and they will not be able to leave anywhere. They will only have that window over there. However, if the window spawns here, then survivors can very, very quickly make a lot of distance by going through it. In that instance, then you will want to break it. Good boy. Blood Lodge is yet another map that only has one breakable wall, but the breakable wall will spawn in one place or another depending on RNG. This is how it can work. You will have this window open, and this doorway open, or this window open, and that doorway open. As you can see, this one's closed, so the opposite one is blocked. And the truth is, this is a big map, most of the time you're not gonna have lots of chases here, but if you do, a really good survivor can make this into a really painful area. They can take the window and then go around, then go again into the window or even loop into one of the tiles that spawns next to it. Uh, this is pretty troublesome. And if they have this wall here, you have a relatively difficult time playing around it. For that reason, you'll probably want to break it. This time on Gas Heaven, <laughs> we have two sets of doors that will be blocked by breakable walls. These two are always, always here. And it is a tough one whether or not you want to break them. If you break any of them, you don't really need to break both. 
Uh, but if you break any one of them, you will provide survivors that are repairing here with an escape route. Which might not be to your advantage as a killer that can benefit from survivors being locked in a place. If you're, say, a hag, you can always put a trap here and trap a survivor that's in this room. But if they have this uh, open, they can always leave. So think about it carefully, whether or not you think it's worth it opening this uh, to have easier access to the generator. Perhaps if you're a pop and you want to get to it quick, this is uh, something you can consider. On the other side of the gas station, there is a... There's yet another case of uh, RG, and there are two sides, two walls, and one of them will have an open door, and the other one will have an open window and a breakable wall. So this door can be blocked with a window here. As you can see, it's not the case. Now it's open with the window blocked, and this is the same. There might be no breakable wall here, and then a block window, or breakable wall here, and open window. And whatever happens on one side, it will be the opposite on the other. Like, in typical fashion. As you can see, if a survivor is here and they vault, you will have a very difficult time catching up. You will need to go through the window, at which point they can just go around and loop you. Or even go to this side and start using this pallet to create distance. You want to break this wall if someone takes you here. And in this map, they typically will. So, yeah, you most certainly want to get rid of this wall. Especially if it's on the other side. As it will be very, very strong for the survivors to be in the middle of the map. And then suddenly go through this window. And you will not be able to fall them without breaking it. You will need to break this one, uh, most, most likely. Moving on to the Groening Storehouse, we have another map with just one breakable wall. In this iteration that you are seeing on screen right now, this breakable wall is facing the corner of the map. But it is not uh, atypical at all to have it face the center of the map. Either way, it's gonna be used by survivors a lot. This wall here is very powerful, the killer cannot really gain much distance on you in any significant way for the most part. And the best thing they can do is the moment they are here and they have a they catch a break to break that immediately. Once this wall is broken, then this window becomes a lot less powerful, as you can imagine. As you can no longer play around it and the killer's not forced to vault it. Um if you try to play it by itself, uh you'll get you'll get caught sooner or later. So definitely break this wall the minute you have a chance. This time around on Suffocation Pit, we have just one breakable wall that will be found in the main building. Uh, one of the variants, the first one, is this one that you're seeing right now. This window right here being open with a breakable wall right next to it. And as you can see, if a killer tries to chase me here, I can go on a very, very long loop around it. And then eventually get back to the window, which is even stronger if you do it the other way around. So a killer trying to follow me through the window here would be pretty damn difficult for them. They will typically, if a chase happens here, they will typically have to break this door. And once that happens, this window becomes a lot less powerful because the killer has a very short path around it. And the chases here will be a lot more dangerous. So that one, if someone takes you here, you'll need to break. And the second variant looks a little bit different. The window gets blocked and the doorway gets open. Uh, but on the other side, this doorway gets blocked by a breakable wall. And that window gets open. And that is a pretty powerful window. So I can take you on a chase and go around, use this pallet, go all the way around, go anywhere else they might have. And you need to play around it. But the, ma the, the fact of the matter is that breaking this door doesn't really change it. Um... A survivor playing around this pallet, which is always here, going into this window. Um, it can play out a little bit like this, for example. Where you go over the window, and yeah, sure. Uh, breaking this might help with navigation a little bit, but it is not a really must uh, in terms of like ending a chase. So if you want to break it, go ahead and do it. But you don't really have to, especially if it doesn't help your navigation all too much. Moving on to the Ironworks of Misery, there is one breakable wall that will always spawn in the main building right in there. If you do break it, it might help your own traversal of the map, getting to basement, getting to the hook that can sometimes spawn height here. Uh, but other than that, you really don't need to break it, as it will also open uh, additional paths and make survivors uh, routes a little bit more unpredictable. By all means, you can totally keep this one locked. The next door that we'll find with a breakable wall, can be found on the upstairs. 
and it's either going to be here with a window next to it or alternatively it can be there with a window next to it and obviously if the window's not it will be it will just be blocked now if a killer is chasing you and you have a little bit of distance like right now you can go over this window and if they vault it you have a lot of time to go around and maybe even take them for another loop or make it to one of the pilots downstairs however if the wall is broken and you vault the window the killer will just step around it and hit you and that means that basically as a killer you don't typically come here by yourself but when you do you pretty much want to break this door before the survivors can take you on it again if you vault the window you might catch up to it to the survivor quicker but then they can take you here yet again so it's typically not worth the risk just break the wall and catch the survivor on to the next one everyone's favorite map we have coal tower and this map is quite interesting you have breakable walls on the bottom and the top floor and the top floor ones i generally think you just don't want to break now typically you will find a generator here and breaking this breakable wall will just give the survivors more escape routes unless you have some big brain mind game uh and you expect to catch a survivor off guard that's running you around this building this breakable walls on the top floor you could just completely ignore now the ones on the second floor on the bottom floor are a different story as you can see these ones are pretty strong if a, if a survivor's running you here they can go around and reutilize them once you break those walls here which can spawn in a number of places you will have an easier time dealing with these windows. You don't need to go out of your way to do it early, but the moment a survivor begins to chase you here and you have the opportunity, break them. It will typically be worth it. The first of Ormond's few breakable walls can be found on this little hut. And honestly, do not bother ever. If you chase a survivor up here and you chase them just a little bit, I guarantee you 10 times out of 10, they will vault this window immediately. You only need to fake it a little bit and then go around and eventually catch up to them right here or before they get someone else. Don't bother breaking these walls. Don't, um, trust me, it's not worth it. The next breakable wall is on the bottom floor of the main building and it can spawn either here or here. Now, this one here, honestly, is not that big of a deal. It prevents survivors from immediately going upstairs, and it blocks your path, so it's a pretty fair trade. Uh, if it spawns here, I typically don't ever break it unless I really need it for, for managing uh, hooks or something uh, that's very, very crucial. This one there, however, is fairly strong, as this window can be pretty strong for both sides. Uh, survivor can run through here with you behind them and then immediately go around here. Uh, check through here where you're going. If they see you, they can go the other way. If they don't see you, they can keep moving and find Shaq and everything on this side of the map. Uh, if this wall stands, that's going to be difficult. If this wall is broken, then you can chase them right off and probably catch them. They won't even get away with that. This other breakable wall also in the bottom floor, I don't think is a huge deal. If you break it, survivors actually have an easier time going from the generator to one of the pallets that can spawn here. So, again, unless you need it for mobility yourself, I don't recommend you just break it outright. On the second floor, we have a number of breakable walls. In these rooms that really have nothing in them, uh, you will see a breakable wall here. If you break it, you just open up a path to drop down. There's literally nothing there. If you break this one, you just create more paths for survivors to run you around. It is definitely not worth it to break any of these breakable walls on this side. In my opinion, as you can see, there's really no reason for survivors to ever come here. You don't want to give them even more pads to run you around. Now, this one's right here. I would not break as they would give more pads for survivors to run you around. Uh, especially considering that the one of the pallets that can spawn is not there. As you can see, this time around the pallets here. So for that reason, I would have zero reason to break any of these walls. Now, if the pallet was right there, even less of a reason to break them. If you're chasing a survivor and they are right here, they will make it to the pallet much, much quicker. So I honestly don't see a good reason to break them yet. Arriving at Midwich, we find the first set of breakable walls in the bathroom corner. Now, if you're on the top floor of the bathroom as a killer or survivor, you can drop down very easily to the bottom through one of these holes. But if you're on the bottom, you can also go up 
by making use of this very elusive set of breakable walls right here. Uh, you could break the first one and trap a survivor going in, as they will have literally no way of getting out. So that's an idea, but survivors typically don't come here. It's not a very safe area, so I wouldn't bother. If you break the other breakable wall, now you'll have a path um, leading from the bottom floor to the top. Uh, this little secret passage, which is pretty neat. However, uh, as I said, this corner is already a death trap for survivors. Once you drop this pallet and the killer breaks it, you are now stuck here and you cannot really get out. You don't want to give them a chance to outrun you. Uh, or go anywhere else, so I say, unless you really have a plan for it, don't bother breaking these walls at all. Uh, very close to the bathroom, we have this reception. And once the survivor is inside it, uh, they can run you around for a little bit, maybe even look back into it if they get lucky. So what you'll typically want to do is, the moment they go in and you don't have a hit on them, break it and this part of the map becomes much, much weaker. You probably also need to break it if you down them inside here and you need to carry them out to a hook. Now, this next set of breakable walls you'll find in classrooms. When you have a classroom next to each other and there is a breakable wall right here, that means that survivors have a vault right on that same wall. If there is no breakable wall, there is no vault. So as a killer, you can know immediately whether survivors can use this vault against you uh, by looking at that door and seeing the, if there's a breakable one. And as you can see, I would be able to run this killer around for a fairly long period of time if I were to just abuse the window like this. So they will typically want to just break this wall if they find themselves in this situation. And suddenly, if they do that, then this window becomes much less powerful as now you can threaten to attack them from both sides. Moving on to the library, we have two breakable walls stacked on top of each other. One of them right there and one of them right here. Now, this one in particular, I don't recommend you break, as this is a loop that is very much in favor of the killer. I'm gonna drop this pallet right here, and if the killer chases me counterclockwise from the other side, um, yeah, like that, I cannot use the loop. I will drop down and I will be forced to come down here. I cannot use that at all. So if this pallet's already gone, that is an easy hit. So by keeping this door intact, you can force this. Uh, the one down below, I would say, is not that big of a deal since there's another door right there. Um, if you need to break these doors for your own mobility, great. Otherwise, don't bother, especially with the one on the second floor. This one, you could break for your own mobility and that would be okay. You might also find the occasional breakable wall in the courtyard. Uh, let's see if we can find one. Uh, these breakable walls are worthless. They really are not very good. A survivor here will not be able to run you. For very long, mind you, you don't ever need to break them unless you really need the points. Up next, we find the Thompson House breakable walls. And there are two of them on the bottom and the top floor, right on top of each other. And they play out exactly the same. You have a very strong window where if a killer is chasing you, they would lose a significant amount of distance if they vaulted. Uh, enough for you to perhaps make it to the next safe spot. However, if this wall is broken, and our killer can demonstrate right now, suddenly this window becomes fairly useless and you will need to move away. And as I said, the one up top is basically exactly the same. Um, if the killer breaks the wall, then this window that would otherwise give you a lot of distance becomes fairly obsolete. That's it. Break them if you need to. Moving on to the Fractor Cow Shed, the only breakable walls are in the main building, and they are that one, and that one, and as far as I understand, they are fairly fixed, and that's it. Now, if you break that breakable wall, you will be opening up a powerful path for the survivors to reach this pallet, or to go from this pallet to inside and then around. I don't think you should break this one, personally. Now, this window is fairly strong, so the other one should be broken. And that will allow you to play around it a little bit better if a survivor goes around this window. Now they won't have the ability to immediately go to the pallet. If you come from this side, they will be forced to take a right and then meet you or take a hit as they're trying to run uh, someone else in the map. In Torment Creek, things are a lot simpler. You have in the main building this very powerful window where if a killer chases you, come come, you can just vault it and play around it 
and they would need to waste a significant amount of time catching up. And you could probably do this multiple times if the killer chases you like this. However, the moment that they break the breakable wall, now this window becomes way less powerful and the loop is a little bit more manageable. Now you can still play it on the long side, but it's not as simple. Time for the Rancid Abattoir, and I believe this map only has one breakable wall, which is found in the main building. It's right here, and if you break it, it can help you deal with this window. Uh, this window can seem intimidating, but there's actually a really neat trick that you can use as a killer if you're on the inside. If a survivor tries to get through the window, all you need to do is get here as they approach it and hit them right over the fence. I'm gonna demonstrate it. Oh, okay. I'm going through the window, I'm going through the window. And that can be a really good way to deal with it. You don't need to break it right away. However, uh, especially if the building is facing one of the sides and you're having a lot of issues with survivors vaulting into the building, maybe not so much if it's facing the edge of the map, then you can totally break it and it will make dealing with this window a lot easier. Because now survivors going in, you'll be able to zone them out and maybe get a hit. Moving on to Family Residence, which is the first Yamaoka map, we have only breakable walls in the main building. You will have a couple in the room with the generator, which is missing right now, but that is typically here. And also around the opposite side. Oh, there's the generator, actually. Forgive me. Uh, right over there. Now, breaking this breakable wall right here can maybe help you deal with this window a little bit. But as you can see, there are other pads around, all of these breakable walls are around other pads near them. I think you can break them as you go across them for mobility, but you really don't need to. As you can see, opening or, or keeping this gate close really doesn't do anything remarkable for you or for the survivors. So break them if you need to go through them, um, ignore them otherwise, even if you ignore them altogether, I don't think it's a huge, huge deal. Um, the only thing I can think of is a survivor perhaps running you here um, through this window by going on a loop like this and then back and forth and trying to loop back into the window. But even that seems difficult. So in that case, yeah, breaking this one would help a bit, but you don't really have to. Stepping into a new realm, we arrive at the Batham preschool maps. There are five Batham variations, but they all have the same buildings, just in a different uh, configuration, and the breakable walls are the same in all of them. Starting with school, we have two breakable walls, one on the right and one on the left. And as a general rule, you want to keep this breakable walls as a killer completely untouched, because in this situation right here, for example, I am completely trapped. If I go down over here, uh, the demo can chase me, then drop down, and eventually catch me no matter where I go. So I will be trapped no matter what. If this breakable wall was open, I would quickly be able to escape through it and maybe find safety beyond. As it is now, this is a death trap for me. And this one is not quite as bad, but it's a bit its a bit of the same. Right here, if the killer's right there, I only have one way to go safely, pretty much. And I don't have the option to immediately go through this door towards the pallet and the car that spawn uh, on the other side that are guaranteed. So with this walls gone, I would be able to go through it and then find safety here. As the match progresses, sometimes as a killer, you will need to break these walls to bring people out into a hook if you don't have any others or if the basement's not in there. And sometimes you will need to break them just to be able to control a gen that might be here, for example. But other than those situations late into the game, do not bother breaking this uh, walls as they will create further pads and more options for survivors to loop you around. The next set of breakable walls are in the two-story house and you will find them on the left and on the right. Now there are different configurations of how this how this map can can spawn this this building and what you'll typically have is three windows on the bottom floor. One, two, three, and one of the corners should have no windows. In this case, it's this one over here. Now, the one side with two windows can be used as a bit of an infinite, as a killer could come and you could go here, then you could wait around for them to come, then go through the window, and their vaulting animations means you could go with, you could keep this up 
for a very long time. And if they catch up, you can go upstairs or go to this pallet. You can do a lot of damage. So in these situations, if you notice that a survivor um, is trying to do this, or if you have the time, I recommend you break the wall. Now, breaking a wall like this, especially if it's facing the middle of the map, means that survivors will be able to go into the house from more angles. So that's something also to consider. That's why perhaps you shouldn't break these walls immediately. Uh, on the other side, on the other hand, however, if the door is facing the edge of the map, like this one, uh, it doesn't really matter if you break it. You will not really make it easier for survivors to uh, get to the house um, any faster because they won't typically be in the corner in the first place. So break this wall if it's convenient and survivors are here and you're in chase. Uh, not a huge priority until someone begins to run you. Uh, fortunately for you, most survivors do not know how to run this house effectively, so you might not even have to break it. Our last building to cover in this map is the so-called House of Pain. It's the one with the garage, you know what it looks like. And there can be two breakable walls. One of them right here. And the other one right around here. And then I believe that it's also possible to have one right here. So how do you deal with all of them? The ones on the outside, survivors can use and abuse. Um, instead of being able to walk around the doorway, they can take one of these windows and you'll be very slow if you're vaulting every single time. Uh, similar here, if there is a breakable wall, they can use one of these windows to really make it difficult you, uh, for you to mind game or follow in any meaningful way. So these doors leading on the outside, I think you should break. This one, however, in the middle catches many survivors off guard. Many survivors will often uh, take the chase here only to realize that the door is here and that they cannot make it to that window or down there in time. So I believe this door you should keep uh, closed uh, unless you really, really need to break it for some other reason as it can net some easy hits on an otherwise very strong building if survivors run here for the first time and they do not understand that this door is not available. So by all means, keep it and you might get a free hit. Next up, we're moving on to the Dead Dog Saloon, the map that introduced breakable walls, and there's a lot of them to cover. The simplest one is the one in the shack. If you break this breakable wall, you have a shorter path around this window or on the pallet. It just makes a lot of sense to break it. The only reason you might not want to break it is if you're a trapper or a hag and you want to restrict the amount of uh, exits if you're going to put someone in the basement. Otherwise, if you break this door, you will have a much easier time dealing with Shag, and you probably should. The next set of breakable walls are all fixed and 100% uh, always there, and they are in the main building. This one by the counter doesn't really open up any great paths for you. In fact, it might even it might make it easier for the survivors to reach some of the strong windows here. You want to ignore. Uh, a similar thing happen, happens with this one over here. You don't really want to break this. Uh, unless you have basement on the other side and you have some play to make, you don't need to break this one at all. Not following the trend, however, is this door over here. This door is next to a window that's fairly strong. If you vault it, a killer cannot really play around it all that well. If they try to vault it, they take a risk of you reaching elsewhere. So breaking this door, um, this breakable wall against decent survivors is probably a good investment. An even better investment is this one. Now, I did I did a medium vault here, but if you're a decent survivor, you can actually do a running vault like that. And this window is very, very powerful. Uh, for that reason, break this breakable wall any chance you get, and it immediately becomes a little bit less powerful as killers can walk around it. Uh, another door that doesn't seem all that important, but that can actually be fairly good, is this one over here. If you have a minute to break it, you will be able to pressure the generator a little bit better. Um, if the generator is still up, a survivor working on it uh, might see you come, they will come over here. And if they try to drop through the window, you can immediately see them and then drop yourself and hit them. And if they keep going, you can chase them over here. So if this, if this generator is still being contested and you really want to defend it, this can be worth uh, your while. Uh, then we have this tiny little room right here. And sometimes survivors will come here for absolutely no good reason. There's actually no way to get out of here. If a survivor is down right here, you won't be able to hook them. If they do go down, you want to break the door going outside and then take them to a hook over there. At no... Uh, at no point ever, in no under no circumstance, you ever want to break either this or that door. Let me show you what happens if you do. 
you will turn this completely dead area that survivors would typically never want to vault into because that would be dead into an actual loop where survivors can go through and then immediately loop back into the other window. And you could probably run a killer a long time just going around. And since they have to deal with this vault, it would take them a long time to catch up. So never break this one. And if they break, if you break that one, it will be a similar thing where survivors will be able to go right through, come out of this way, and then take the window. So these two, these three doors, you should largely ignore unless a survivor goes into this room and goes down. In which case, only break that one to get out. Now, there are a lot of structures in this map that mimic other structures in other maps. This is like a four-lane wall, and the breakable walls are almost always worth breaking in these to make them better. Uh, however, if you identify that it's just a four-lane wall and this pallet is not that safe, this one, for example, you don't really need to break. Although if you do, you'll probably be glad, as the survivors will have now even less resources as this window becomes really unsafe once that is broken other structures like this however are much much stronger a survivor can wait right here and no matter where you come from they'll be able to run one way or the other and they could look you here a fairly long amount of time uh you definitely want to break this breakable wall to deal with this one if you feel like a survivor is decent you will also sometimes have other breakable walls uh, in structures like this that are worth breaking. And here is such an example. This one's quite naughty. Now, this pallet here is very easy to play around. Uh, come, Mr. Killer. If a survivor drops it and then they try to play around it, you don't even need to break it. If they vault, you can hit them right over this railing. Let's demonstrate. So, try to keep your back against that window and this is easy to play. However, uh, what if the survivors try to use this window? Mm, then that's kind of troublesome. You might want to break either of these walls to make it a little bit less troublesome. In a corner of the map by the water mill, you also have this tiny little shack that has a window. Sometimes some smart survivors will play around this pallet and then vault into it. And you could break it to make this a bit less safe, but typically speaking, if you chase in the right direction to not give this vault and then get rid of this pallet, this shouldn't be much of an issue, unless it's extremely convenient. Uh, don't bother breaking this one. Moving on to the game, uh, the main breakable wall that you're going to see in this map is this one that spawns exclusively next to the sliding doors. And these sliding doors always, always spawn next to a gen that needs to be repaired. Now, before the generator is completed, um, a survivor in a situation like this is completely cut off from any escape route and a killer coming into a room like this will have a field day because it's basically a free hit. If you break this wall right here, you are providing survivors with a free escape route that they can use and you will have an easier time accessing the generator, yes, but they also have an easier time running away and finding safety. So breaking these walls, I think in general, is a bad idea unless you really, really need to for hooking or very, very desperate generator repair um, stopping purposes. Once the generator in question has been done, then opening or breaking this breakable wall is completely pointless, as you can see, because there is a there is another path right next to it. So it's literally pointless afterwards, and I would say quite a bad idea beforehand. And I think that's pretty much every breakable wall that you'll see in this map. Arriving to the Father Campbell's Chapel, uh, there are a number of windows in the bottom floor of this map. And they can all be pretty powerful. You can have a window there, there like we have right now, here as well. This wall can be a window sometimes. Every wall that spawns here can be really powerful. There can be one right here. And you will need to deal with them. Um, however, uh, I think there are two exceptions. And I think it looks like we got lucky. Any wall spawning on this side, I think you would typically want to break. However, uh, this door right here does prevent the survivors from reaching this building. And it can stop their progress a little bit. If you yourself do not have an issue getting to that generator because you're a nurse or because uh, the layout of the map allows you to get there however you want, maybe you teleport is ready, you do not need to break this door. 
as it actually forces survivors that are here to go to a less optimal side where you may catch them. Occasionally, you will also have a door right here, and this door is pretty good, as it can force survivors that run up here to not be able to run up there and instead have to take the vault. And then you can follow up through that open doorway and catch them. So, door here and door there, uh, you might not want to break, especially that one up there. Every other door, especially if you see a survivor begin to run you around some of these really strong windows, you will typically need to deal with, as otherwise, survivors can run you almost indefinitely here, or at least for a very long time, um, making it a worthwhile investment to just break them. Uh, moving on to the uh, asylum, the disturbed ward of it. Um, this is a fairly complex building, but it turns out there's only one breakable wall. I don't think there's any other, and it will spawn right here, right next to this green room. The green room uh, has two windows available, this one and that one. Only one of them will be open at a time. If that one over there is the one open, you can come here as a killer and catch a survivor dropping without even going through it. If this other one is available, then breaking this breakable wall becomes a little bit more attractive to deal with it. But it can also open up a an escape route and an entrance into the asylum for survivors coming from this area. So break it when you feel like it, maybe not right at the start of the match. And I believe that with that we've covered every single breakable wall. But if I did forget one or if one gets included in a patch shortly after this video and you know how to deal with it better than I did, uh, please let me know. It will help me and anyone else watching the video if they check the comments out. I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.